Hello and welcome to This Is. Are you one of the sad boys like me, patiently waiting for your Steam Deck email to show up? Well, we got you covered today because we have a the whole bunch of handouts the play date is here. that aren't Hello. the Steam Deck. The Playdate is the Steam Deck killer. <laughs> Do you think if I took a Playdate and smashed it into a Steam Deck, it would break the Steam Deck? I think this is the Nokia of the modern era. These things Do are incredibly well built. Do not break my Playdate. Your Playdate. One of the things that you're going to find with almost all of the items that we're talking about here is that they too are different difficult to get their hand your hands on thanks chip shortages mm. but if that Steam Deck has been elusive for you. We actually do have a pretty good selection of things that you may want to consider. They all have pros, they all have cons. The con for most of these is the price. So we have a couple different things we can do. We can start with the Playdate. This here is the most unique gaming device that I think I've ever been a part of. Very Game Boy reminiscent. Let me read the specs on this guy. This is a 400 by 240 one bit screen so it is just black and white but it is a very nice screen if you've ever spent time with original game boys you'll know that there's a certain blurriness to the screen because it's very low pixel density this is roughly double i believe uh, the pixel density of a normal game boy which means that the individual pixels are sharp and importantly the contrast is good you don't have a stupid little wheel that you're adjusting but the other thing is this like a game boy and unlike everything else we look at and everything else that's been made since the year 2000 does not have a backlit screen a big downside to that is that of course if you're in the dark you can't can't see but on the other side not only do you have great battery life when you're outside but the screen looks better the more light that you can throw at it so if you're you're hanging out the car window I, you're... Yeah. if you were a 90s kid like myself you know the pain of driving on a road trip at night trying to play by the street lights as you pass by because if you dared turn on the backseat light your father would go i can't see anything you're like dad i'm about to beat the elite four no nope. I, I can't see that will be a problem with the playdate what else makes the playdate unique is that you don't buy games for this well sort of so if you buy a playdate it comes with one season of games which means that games will be delivered actually I don't know do you remember exactly how many games there are in season one the way it's going to work is there are 24 games in that season these are not massive games these are maybe like you might get a couple hours out of yes, them some i think are, it's like a 10 minute thing some or there's a little bit more to it a lot of them do take advantage of the little crank and the fact that this thing is not only delightfully designed I mean, you can hear that plastic the best hardware to, oh, there it Smells is. Awesome too. smell tips. I'm not uh, talking about feet, so you can't complain. Why is feet in every episode? Speaking of feet, oh, oh, a common misconception with the Playdate is that the crank is to charge it. It is not. It is an input device. The music in it is really good. It's so good. This thing is cool. Now, the problem with it is price and availability. Yeah. So it is $179, which when you consider it comes with a bunch of games, isn't maybe crazy, but it's certainly not like a throwaway $50 little item or something no. like this is something that is designed for distinguished gamers of taste. And also it's sold out like massively. So I think according to their website, the production capacity for 2022 is full. Totally sold out. Mind you, this is just the way that life is at the moment. It is very difficult to secure production capability between chips and shipping and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of these items, if you put your order in now, you're gonna have to wait a while. But the Playdate is a very unique, interesting product. It's really kind of the anti-Steam Deck in pretty much every possible way. It's a very focused, simple, I would say almost gimmicky kind of thing because it's very much kind of a one size fits yeah, all. I mean, like, You're not gonna play Windows games or anything on that. It's very much like, oh, well, give this thing a try. And I have a is. feeling this is gonna end up on our shelf as like a display piece more than it would be an actual Maybe. thing that we carry around in our bag. It's hard to justify that price for, for what you're getting with that. Speaking of justifying the price, <laughs> why is there an Apple logo on the back of the Ioneo? Because Jared is Jared. Oh yeah, okay, so this is the Aya Neo. Now, if you're looking for something that is going to replace your Steam Deck, this is about as close as it gets right now. We actually did a little piece on this for Mystery Tech a little while ago. You yep. can check that out for something that's a little bit more sort of in depth. Essentially, this really is a Windows powered Steam Deck. I'm just gonna just put this right up front. This thing is expensive. It is um, <clears throat> $1,415. Did you just say $1,415? Roughly $1,000 more than a Steam Deck. <clears throat> what? They definitely have a fan base. And some of the things that are an advantage here, it runs full Windows right out the box. So unlike Steam Decks, yeah. which it runs Windows, but it's not a great experience. It really kind of treats itself like a Windows laptop, right? So you have a touchscreen, you have quite nice controls. It also has like a very similar kind of display. It's not quite as powerful as a Steam Deck. So it's actually got more CPU cores, but less GPU, which for gaming actually means it's not quite as good. And importantly, I believe the INEO is 
a little bit easier to get your hands on, right? Yeah, and that. like realistically, this is like almost I want to say a laptop replacement because that's not quite the but it's like USB C you kind of could like you can dock this and and have this be your computer that you travel around with. It has a lot more versatility than the Steam Deck. The problem, and this is really nothing to do with us as consumers, but more so on the, the back end, Valve aren't making money on Steam Decks, yeah. right? Like they're making those so you buy more games on Steam. Ioneo is a company who actually needs to make money right. on the hardware that they sell, right? So obviously they've got to build in some profit there. And of course you're also paying for, you know, a full copy of Windows and all kinds of other stuff. So look, this is a niche item. I think it's a little bit nicer than the Steam Deck in certain ways. And the fact that if you want something that's gonna really properly run Windows right out of the box, it's a good option, but I think the vast majority of people are better off served waiting for the Steam Deck or purchasing one of the other items we have here, such as the Analog Pocket. Now, similar to the Playdate, this is more of a retro-inspired console. It's really designed to play Game Boy games. Now, yes, Game Boys have existed for many a year. The thing is, what you get with this is something that is not emulating. It's actually, well, it's FPGA hardware is, emulating. Yes, exactly. It's not software emulating. It also has a terrific screen, an incredibly high resolution, 1600 by 1440 display, 10X on both resolutions compared to an original Game Boy game. The display on the analog pocket is absolutely 100% my favorite part of this device. Yeah, it's an amazing display. Crazy. However, I know you're gonna defend this. Yeah. And I know you're going to say like, oh yeah, it upscales it and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But at the, at the end of the day, it is still one of the best screens I've seen pushing 12 pixels. No, but here's the thing, right? So Game Boy Advance games actually don't look quite as nice because it's not the same aspect ratio. Yeah. Because this display is literally 10 times the vertical and horizontal resolution of an original Game Boy. It means that if you put one of those games in there, it is absolutely unreal at how well it not only draws all the pixels, but you get all the lines between pixels and stuff, the stuff that you cannot really get even on like a super high end emulator. On top of that, the hardware feels really nice. So it is plastic, but it has very nice buttons. And importantly, it actually works with all the original accessories. I've got a full link cable port here i can trade and play with other people either with an analog pocket or an original game boy and on top of that the screen and the speakers and the headphone check like the whole thing is basically just a super super nice game boy this thing is awesome i love it but i mean like let's go back to price it's yeah 220 dollars. which if you're trying to build a custom game boy you're gonna end up spending something that's actually not too far away from that by the time you have to like swap out the shell, buy the new screen, you have to solder things. Again, that's stuff that we've done before in the past. But what you're gonna get is even if you heavily modify an original Game Boy, it's gonna be very difficult for you to get something which is going to be this solid feeling. And you also have some emulator like features like i can just put this to sleep and yeah. then just wake it up that's, and that's it's nice it's that save like, states but it's cool you know if it had like a built-in emulator where you didn't have to use cartridges i think that would go a long way so here's the thing and there's yeah like that would be a potential thing that it might be able to do at some point maybe <laughs> but it doesn't right now when it well, costs 220 dollars. yeah and that's kind of my point with it like if i go get an card. emulating machine like this one i could play every game the ambernick rg 552 these little handhelds have always been pretty good the little emulator machines but this is the first one that really kicks it up a notch if you saw our everyday carry video which you can catch up here this here is been in my bag since i got this this is one of my favorite devices of quite a while these have all run like some version of custom firmware that was like kind of like retro arc but like the all the processors on them were pretty low they were able to do like up to like playstation one but like barely this is the first time it's been a major upgrade what actually caught my eye about this particular one is this the first time that out of the box runs android so spec wise this is a six core 1.8 gigahertz rk3399 processor this can run up to wii games it ran uh, mario galaxy just fine wow that's impressive um, it yeah. runs psp just fine so i was playing liberty city stories yeah. on that that's actually pretty impressive yeah how much is this so this is 250 dollars now that's a lot for 250 the, bucks here's the hidden thing that i loved about this i got this running with Xbox Game Pass. Out of the box, it runs Android 7. Someone had gotten uh, Android 11 up and running on it, but unfortunately, it's not officially supported. I tried that, I was not able to get that to work. No, this also can run Linux, right? If you yes. want to flash a copy. And it has two ports, uh, two um, micro SD card slots on there. Oh. So you can actually dual boot this if you wanted to. That's cool. Where it gets kind of sketchy is Internally, it only has a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi card. Oh, you can't. Yeah. That's so while I was able to get 
X, uh, X Cloud running on this, it wasn't a great experience. Just out of the box, it doesn't actually support five the drivers. Yeah, yeah. That's... So if you were to upgrade it to Android 11, which yeah. I was unable to do, you could you could get this up and running. There's some other weird downsides to this. It does not have Bluetooth in any way, shape, or form. That's a miss, a big miss. A big miss, Yeah. especially because it has a mini HDMI port out of here so you can plug it into your TV. However, if it doesn't have Bluetooth, you're not really gonna wanna dock this. It's a little smaller than a Switch Lite, but it's yeah. kind of in that same sort of zone. That's not looking too promising. Did you forget to charge your Amber Neck? No, I let these charge overnight. <sighs> Did your Ambernick die right before we made a video on it? Unfortunately, my Ambernick actually died. Is it actually dead? It's not turning on. This thing is really cool if it wasn't just spontaneously dead right before we hit the record button. I will absolutely give you that there's a very interesting use case for this Ambernick. If you're looking for a small emulator, this makes a lot of sense. So it brings us around to the prices of all these things. <laughs> and having seen the pros and cons of everything, I think you should just wait for a Steam Deck. <laughs> Wait, because did you clickbait me, Matt? You made me sit through this entire video, and now you're telling me that I was right to wait for my Steam Deck all along? Yeah. So as much as I like all of these, yeah. let's be real, no one's cross-shopping a Steam Deck with a, a Playdate. These two are within the ballpark of a Steam Deck. The versatility that you get with the Steam Deck, I think, outweighs the price difference between these. This is one of those things where it's very much dependent on you, the gamer. Yeah. If you want, like, the super authentic Game Boy-style experience, this is obviously your move. If you want the quirky, weird Playdate, that's your move. If you want just emulators with none of the extra stuff that actually is going to work well when it actually wants to turn on, the Amberding makes sense. to turn back on because I love this thing. I'm so sad. <laughs> If you'd like to send condolences to Matt for his loss, feel free to tweet him at Matt Ancini. Let us know in the comments what other handhelds you think we should have taken a look at. Type F in the chat for me and send me $12 so I can buy a new one. If you need to send me $12, I can buy a couple of these. My cash app can be oh reached at hashtag 44264 Klondike, the letter H in Latin.